Hello everyone, this is Jason Mutlak from StellarMate. In this video, we'll be talking about using rotators. The rotator I'm using right now in my observatory is the one uh, from Moonlight, Nightcrawler Rotator. So, uh, but you can use any rotator with ECOS. In this video, we'll be using the astrometry modulo to solve uh, an image, and we'll be using the image rotation to synchronize our rotator and then use it to go to any desired position angle uh, in the sky. Uh, don't worry if you don't understand the concept about position angle and angles as they can be pretty uh, confusing. Uh, even for me when I started uh, uh, designing the system. Uh, but it's, it's uh, once you understand the basics, it's pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and unpark. And uh, let us pick a target. And I'm going to pick M13. Let's go to the target. OK, so we are at M13 right now. Or the mount things, it's looking at M13. OK, so zoom in with DSS overlay here. Capture and solve. Let's move this back here. Okay, so now this is the first image. Now it's correcting itself. Okay, actually the mount is performing a complete meridian flip, but we're pretty close to the uh, to the south meridian line. And now it's performing a complete meridian flip. So let's uh, let's just wait until this is over. 96 degrees. And and uh, this could be your position angle, but it depends on which side of the meridian you are. So as a general rule, ignore the rotation here. You don't really need to know anything about it. Okay. So now we're done and we solved this image. And uh, in order to illustrate the position angle, let's go ahead and create an FOV indicator for our camera. Let me stop tracking right here. OK, so let's go to the FOV editor. Let's just click here, edit FOV symbols. Let's add a new one. I call it QSI. Click on camera. OK, and I think we, we can just enter directly here. So we already know it is 68 by 51. So 68 arc minutes times 51.2. And we can set it locked celestial ball. And let's select a distinctive color. OK, so let's just click OK. We have it, and let's display the, uh, let's display the, our FOV. So this is our new FOV. Now, if we go back to the camera here, we go to the rotator control, we're going to see here a few controls. And don't be overwhelmed. The uh, position angle here is where you're going to look at it. And if you remember, we said here this is negative 96. So actually, this is not the position angle. The position angle was calculated to be 83. So now this is the current position angle. And uh, just give me a minute to explain what the position angle is. So the position angle is the angle of the camera orientation with respect to the celestial pole, in my case, and in most of your cases, it would be in the North Celestial Pole. So if we zoom back here a bit, OK, and it's, it's, a, it's a bit slow because you're using DSS overlay right here. But see, so, so this is Polaris. And this is our box right here. So if you take a line from here to here, you can see 
how the position angle is defined. If your camera, let's go back here. If the camera was, actually this the FOV is a perfect example here. This FOV right now has a position angle of zero because it's looking directly at the North South Pole. Now, click here to change the uh, target position, uh, the, the target position angle you want. Now let's make that 45, for example. So you can see that it rotated counterclockwise 45 degrees. If we go to 90, it rotated 90 degrees from where it was when it was looking directly at the North Celestial Pole. And of course, you can see that if we go 180, it's going to look this way. And of course, 270. Well, I'm missing a zero here. Hmm. Oh, okay. Actually, it's it takes negative, so negative 180 and then negative 90, right? So, so the range of the position angle is 0 to 80 and 0 to negative 180. So if we put negative 90, it's going to look directly here. Okay, so this is this explains how this that our position angle right now is 83 because if it was 90 let's 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 go and look at it zoomed right here so now the yellow fov indicator is the one that the solver figured out and this is 83 but so if we thought if we, if we rotate a bit more, we'll be at 90 degrees. Okay, so that's that's what the position angle is for. So if you're imaging and if you want to uh, set a specific position angle, this is where you set it here, and that's it. You press OK, and then you go and uh, you add your images here and you start, and then it would go to the desired position angle. So actually, let's 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 do that. Let's go to rotator, and I want my position angle to be, let's say, 120. So I want it to move this way, right? So we were here, and I want it to go over here. OK. So press OK, and now let's just take a sample image to make sure that the rotation works actually. So let's take a four by four image. Let's let's add that right here. And remember, remember that our current angle is 83 and our desired angle is 120, right? And now let's start. So now the first thing that it says that setting rotator angle 120, if we open here, we can see that the rotator is moving. The rotator here has its own angle controls. Like internally, it's moving now, like if you look at it, it's moving to the right or uh, uh, counterclockwise. Actually, sorry, this is clockwise. But again, you don't really care about the internal details. What you care is you want to get to 120, right? So now that we got to 120, now we're capturing an image. And there we go, and we have an image. And if actually if you look at this and look at the the FOV here, you can see it has like the star patterns, they have the same orientation. But we can discard this image. Let's say we don't believe that we are really at this angle. Let's go back to the asymmetry module. Okay and let's capture and solve again. And let's see what happens to this yellow F of E indicator. So now it's solved. Actually, it is solving right now.
And there we go. So you see now this is what the astrometry.net detected, which exactly matches the orange FOV, which is was the 120 desired angle. Uh, so, so this setting right here is if you want to capture a sequence. But say you want to change it right now. What you could do, well, I mean, you could directly control the rotator angle, which is not the position angle. This is like the row angle of the rotator. If you want to change the position angle, we can change it directly here. So let's go here and say, let's go to 90, for example. Let's make sure that... Uh, Let's stop this actually. Let's go to 90 and press set. So now this immediately changes it back to 90. We'll wait until it is over. And actually, if we, if we move this here, this is where we should expect to be, right? Now let's solve again. So this is, was the 120, and now we're going here. So let's solve again and see what the asymmetry.net reports. As, as, you, as you expect, you'll see that, for example, M13 is because we're moving in an arc, it's 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 an uh, as an offset, so um, it's nothing to worry about. You can recenter always there after after the rotation. You can recenter, and uh, here we see the results from the solver, which matches exactly our our desired results. Okay, that's it about rotators. Thank you for watching, and let me know if you have any questions. Clear skies.